Thank you, Lee. Yeah, it's always a little bit of a worry when someone asks you to speak about macro languages. It's not the most exciting thing. I'm used to really talking about dynamic and exciting and passionate topics like stormwater drainage. But um, I will try to get this to go. So what we're going to talk about is macro for beginners. And first of all, the thing you might want to think about is why would I possibly want to write a macro? And macro writing is not for everybody. Are there any macro writers out there? It's okay, you can admit it. <laughs> a couple? Good, yeah. To try to describe to someone how to write a macro is a little bit like trying to describe an artist how to paint. Everyone does it different. And it is a very creative process. So if I mention things that aren't your way, please forgive me. Uh, this is the way that I write my macros. So why write them? Well, when 12D writes or any kind of code, we usually talk to our users. They give us great ideas. And that's a wonderful starting point. And there's a lot of users to talk to. It takes a bit of time. The next thing that happens is we have to, well, we generally talk to our distributors, some of the support staff, what ideas do you think? And all of those ideas come together to make uh, routines that are inside 12D. Well, that all can change, okay? We can push 12D aside for a moment, and in comes the user, and now you can create your own 12D apps. You'll probably recognize this very friendly face as someone who thinks he always has a better idea than the 12D staff. So what can macros do? Um, you may not know it, but all of the drainage plan plotting is a macro in the background. Okay, so they can do very powerful functions. The TP stakeout routines, Mick Gunder had an incredible amount to do with that. Macro language. Um, later, you'll, you'll, if you go speak to the catch sim people, there's an interface between 12D and catch sim, a macro. So macros have an incredible place inside 12D to give outside parties the capability to write code, make 12D operate the way they want to. If you're going to write a macro and you are a beginner, start with something simple, okay? Don't plan on doing complex things from the start, okay? If you're going to choose something, find something that's tedious to do, that you often have to do, and it's wasting you a lot of money because those are things you'll probably get approval for right away. I'd encourage someone to start with chains. Macros run inside chains. Chains are incredibly flexible, and the interface is very easy to use, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. One of the things that are often used, sorry, macros are often used for, is reading and writing report data formats. People will give you something, and they'll want it inside 12D. It gives you a chance to read it, or to take your information and pass it out. Those are a couple of things that you can do. <clears throat> so where do you start? Down to nitty-gritty. Inside 12D, there is a macro help manual. Okay? And let me just show you where you might find something like that. So let's we'll start with 12D. Okay. So, 
the task that we go through. Oops, I took this too far ahead. Or back to home. That's all right, at least we know this part. All right, so that help while I was talking about. It. When we go up to help, and we go down to our um, 12D macro manual, okay, we get this incredible new uh, panel that pops up in Windows 7. When you see it, what it says essentially, you can't see the help file in Windows 7. Okay, you have to get an extra DLL. So let me go back to my um, picture of it. And that's what it looks like if you're not running Windows 7. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing that you're going to recommend for help is the forum. The forum is a fantastic spot to get help, not just on 12D, but there is a specialized part down here that's just on macros. And I realize the text is quite small, but it says there's about 225 posts on there, so there's a lot of information, a lot of very helpful programmers. And this year we're definitely missing one person here. Everyone might know Sam. And yes, it does look like Sam is a surveyor, but he's also an exceptional macro writer, and someone will often find and give you help. And the reason he's not here, I believe his wife's having a baby. And so that's pretty exciting. And also some evidence that he must do something other than write macros. <laughs> so building blocks. How can we do to put these things together? Well, first of all, it's made up of objects. Okay? And these objects are things you're used to seeing inside 12D. Things like views, models, tins, elements. All these things are objects when it comes time to program. Okay? If you get so gung-ho as to want to put a panel together, a panel is put together with things like tabs. These things are all called widgets. And we've got button widgets and box widgets and more widgets than you can possibly imagine. So that's probably not where I'm going to encourage you to start, but those are objects that are there for you. The things you can't see. Okay, when you turn into a programmer, you have to take a look at these things. We have things called variables and arrays, and they're made up of integers and real numbers and lists. If you're a programmer, you're big on lists. We keep track of things that we have to go through. All right? So those are some of the building blocks that we're going to use when we put together our first macro. Now, once you have objects, you want to do something to them. And you do something to these objects with functions. And of course, we've got a whole pile of mathematical functions. But the real power to the 12D macro language is our macro library of functions. For example, the Tintin intersect. You can imagine the amount of work that went in to do something like that, um, especially if you want to do it for SuperTin. When you want to use the macro language, you call one statement to do a Tintin intersect. So there's a whole library of incredibly powerful functions. Okay? It's easy to well, You can go and create objects, new views, new models, new elements, change them, which is what we're going to do. We're going to be changing some colors. Or, of course, you can sure delete things. You can delete them quickly. Okay? So off we go. We're into our program now. Um, think about what you're going to do before you start. Okay? If you don't have a clear idea of where you want to go, you're going to get uh, just a complete mess very quickly. I believe in going to experts. This is what it looks like when you're thinking carefully. And I mean, you realize it's master. I, I believe in going to the masters when you're looking at how to do something. So that's that intense look that you're going to look for if you truly want to get into the Zen of programming. <laughs> Write your code down as comment lines. Now this is something that I do, it's my style, in that I figure if I write out my, my ideas in English, I have a better chance of turning out properly inside computer code. So that, that's my idea. So let's take a look at how you actually write your code. So inside 12D, I'm going to go to our utilities down to macros, and we have a whole macro menu here. And the button you want to start with is the create button. So if I just wanted to create a name, a macro, so really romantic here, and name this one after my wife. Go open up this one. Sorry. We give you a bit of a hand to get going. Okay, we give it a name, everything with those double slashes, everything to the right is completely ignored. Okay? We've got the entry point. There always has to be some place to start. We start at that line called main, and then the program sits between those two square brackets. And in this case, this program only pops up a message that says, hey, finished. Right. So we give you a bit of a starting point. Now I considered writing all the code in front of you, 
which would probably do two things. Bore you to tears, make myself incredibly embarrassed in front of you all as I make mistakes, and I didn't like either of those ideas. So what I did is I put together a bit of a code in uh, different points of completion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off and I'm going to go to edit my Rainbow One program. <coughs> now how is the saw? It's a little small there, isn't it? Uh, let's go back to the format. It's a little bit better format for it. How about 16? Better go back? All right. So that's the part that I'm talking about. Write out what you're going to do in English so you can read it. So my plan here is to uh, get a mod name, okay? Well, first of all, check to see if the user gave us one, because if no one didn't ask for a model name, we couldn't do anything. So I'm going to get a whole model of curves, and then I'm going to go create one of these magical objects that we get to use. It's a model object. Then I'm going to stop if I've got a bad name, and then for every single string I find inside that model, I'm going to change its color. And then I'm going to put a message up saying it's finished. So, both in general, that's my idea of where I want to go. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, for rainbow two, is I'm going to put a little bit of code in behind here. Now, this is when some people will definitely get scared off, some people will fall asleep, some just might run away screaming. Um, it's not too bad. I mentioned a variable. We created a text variable, but we're going to store the name of the model, okay? And it's going to start out quite empty. Then we're going to check to see if what's called a command argument has been given to the routine to run. So let me show you what a command argument is and where it might come from. Back inside 12D, later when it comes time to run one of these. All right, so five minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump back and skip that and we'll, you'll see the command arguments in a minute or two. But what we're going to do is print out the name of a model name, sorry, print the model name to the background window just to confirm what the user sent us. Often programs fail because there's a misunderstanding between what the user types and what the programmer expects. So that's our way to confirm that. We're going to print it out to that output window we have. Then we're going to go through every string, okay, and we're going to create one of these wonderful lists I talk about. And on this list is going to be all of the strings. And we're going to find out how many strings are inside this list. And that's what this command does, to get elements. So we'll find out how many strings there are. And for every string, we're going to use this, um, not a high tech function call, not like a TNT ninja set. We're going to change the color. So that's where we're headed to with this. Now, I'm going to skip a couple of steps here. Because typically, once you've written your code, the next thing you have to do is compile it. So if I come back here, the next step we would do is come down to uh, compile and run. And what I'm going to do is I go pick the source code, and I'm going to jump to this almost finished one. And here's our chance to put in the macro, macro arguments. And that, in our case, was going to be the model name. Now, this wonderful model I wanted to change the color for was called R, AK2D. So I'm going to put in R. AK2D, and I'm all set up. If I'm going to be doing this a bunch of times, I might want to set this to my defaults. I love defaults inside 12D, because I'm a very slow typer. And then I'm going to go hit the Compile and Run button. Okay? What the Compile and Run button does is it goes and reads the code, converts it into something the computer can understand, or 12D can understand, and once it's in that object format, it's able to do whatever you asked. And you see it's hit the end and it said everything's gone the way it's expected. Now the part that I jumped over was the part where you get all the compiled errors. Uh, perfection is not one of my qualities. And I want to show you exactly what it looks like when someone looks completely baffled. And this is a familiar expression for us. <laughs> there you go. I've seen that a couple times today and here it is again. <laughs> Generally you would fix those errors. Okay? Once you've got it compiled, you test and test and test. Make sure it works. If it doesn't work, rethink your ideas. Then you give it to a real tester, which is not you. It has to be somebody else. Einstein said something about not being able to fix problems you create. And it's also hard to break things that you create. You have to give it to somebody else. Okay? And of course, the last thing you want to do is give it to someone who can document and release it for you. And I think Han might have documented something in his life, 
but that's one of our other programs there. Well, we'll go there. So, when you're all done, that's what we hoped for. Now, I realize that's not a Picasso, but uh, it's probably the best colors I can come up with quickly. And hopefully that's been enough to sort of show you the basic steps that involves going from the beginning of an idea and going to the end of writing a macro. Okay? So thank you very much for that.